All right, so let's put this rumor to rest. Do you feel like you notice a drop in bookings once the next season comes out? This is when all the girls get their work done. So what'd you get done? Oh. Um, Are there any queens that go on RuPaul's, maybe don't have the fan base you have, and find themselves at a regular job again? How much did you spend? I spent a little close to... Let me take you back to how this opportunity even came to be. I've been doing Our Queer Life, my digital docuseries that explores all different facets of the queer community for almost six months now. And I have met some of the most interesting, inspiring, vulnerable, and strong people in those six months. Either you can shut your mouth or we can go to the back over here and may the best punk win. I wouldn't say it's safe. I don't know why I feel safe. Maybe because nothing's happened to me yet. A little shack with the t-shirt on it. Uh-huh. That is our shitter. One in a million shot, you're gonna get your own reality TV show. What the f*** are y'all doing to get these people off the street? But I've always known that if I'm gonna do a series on queer culture, I need a queen from RuPaul's to come on the show eventually. No, definitely? No, no, like, no, as in like, yes. <laughs> like, no, definitely, yes. Yeah. So one morning, when I was scouring the internet for interesting stories, I decided to email Candy on a whim, not ever even thinking that she would get back to me. But she did, and she was down, and I was thrilled. <laughs> 44 email exchanges later, and the night had finally arrived. I was to meet her at her hotel in downtown Los Angeles. I got there a couple minutes early, sat outside to go over my questions, but before I knew it, it was time to start the interview. Final set. Cut. Thank you for doing this. Am I looking at you or am I looking at the camera? Just both. Well, okay. this is a three-way conversation. Work. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're all over the place. In all life. over the world. Yes. <laughs> I feel like the life of a drag queen is so crazy. Well, uh, the life of a... <clears throat> Cut. <clears throat> the life of a regular drag queen is already insane, especially the full-time drag queen. The life of a full-time drag queen on television is even crazier. I am very grateful for the opportunities that I am receiving from RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah. But I am human, and it's very exhausting. And, but it, you know, that's just me being, like, stupid, because everyone's exhausted with their regular job, you know? Yeah, but when, you're, when you have that momentum, you gotta ride the wave. You can't, you can't stop. You well, know? absolutely, you know, because it's in the entertainment industry, once you disappear for... A, you know, a little bit. You just, you're gone forever. You have to like keep it up and let people know. Like, I don't hey, know if that'd be I'm the case with here. you though, because Candy is like iconic in the drag race. Wow! Oh my God! Stop! Say it again. Yeah, Candy's <laughs> iconic. <laughs> no, you have such a personality, and that's why I was so excited to get you on. Because obviously, I wanted a drag queen on my show because it's all about queer culture. But like a drag queen. Uh, yes. <laughs> a drag queen. I am the queen of drag. Yeah. Now I'm ready for my crown, bitch. What was your first job like before being a drag queen? Okay, it was like a pyramid scheme. Like, I had to be like 18, 17. Um, it was something that I found on Craigslist. Uh, just because my mother kept bugging me for a job. But like LuLaRue or something like it that? It was something I was like, I, I would go to people's houses um, and have them switch their electrical bill to our company. It really was a pyramid scheme because I wouldn't get paid. It was whatever. It was a mess. From the hood to Hollywood. <laughs> I'm really interested in like the financial aspect of Drag Race yeah. and how these queens have to come with all these looks that prob <clears throat> probably cost so much money and how do they afford that before they have the money from RuPaul's? When I got the call for Drag Race, it, we were in peak pandemic. We had three weeks to get ready and obviously wow. everyone knows when you sign up for Drag Race, the race literally starts the second yeah. you get the call. But we weren't doing drag, we weren't working. We weren't in the car, in the bars. Oh we weren't making gosh. money. So when we got the call for Drag Race, I remember for some reason I thought, okay, they're going to call us like end of summer. I'll have time to like save up. And then funny enough, they called us at the beginning of the summer. And I was like, fuck, what am I going to do now? And I was lucky enough to have money flowing in from like every corner, like out of nowhere. And I also had a lot of Rue girls, Miriko Hara, Alaska, Nikki Doll, that, you know, helped me get ready for Drag Race. And I had just also did the song Sitting Alone in the VIP with Alaska. So I had money from that as well. Alone in the IP, uh, my own security. Ooh. Some girls take out loans. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that, like, Miss Cracker said she spent more than her college. Cameron said she spent more than her down payment on her house. Yeah. Although, I don't think you need to spend that much money to go on drag race. Money can't buy good taste. Right. Do I think having a lot of money helps? Absolutely. You know, everyone wants the financial freedom of getting whatever the fuck they want. But yeah. I spent... How much did you spend? Well, without saying a number, I spent more than someone would on a... How much is a BBL? Uh, That's like 5000 I would say about, yeah, I would say about five dollars. Oh, yeah. So. As a nose job work. How many BBLs? <laughs> how many, how many BBLs? It's five thousand. <laughs> five. My love, you can do five times three. Oh, I can, I can, I can, yeah. Wait, what's five, five, what's yes. five thousand times three? 
fifteen thousand. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. Oh no, I spent more than fifteen thousand though. Wow. Yeah, I spent a little close to almost. It was twenty six. But it's worth it, and it's an investment into your future. It absolutely is. You know, well, going to Dragons, I always said if I go on there, I want to look my best. There were some misses, because, you know, we can't be great at everything. <laughs> I'm not Mick or Simone. It really is almost like the stock market. You invest to get back. But then I think of people like Heidi and Claude, maybe didn't spend as much, but it didn't matter, because she wins you over the personality, and that's all that matters. And, and that's the thing with Drag Race. We've seen girls in the show that have amazing looks, that have amazing um, outfits, that go on there and don't maybe get the response from the fans that they want. As much as we all love to watch Drag Race for the runways, this is a personality-based television show. Do you feel like there should be some sort of cap like everyone can spend this amount of money and that's all to make it more of an even playing field i do think to a certain extent some people are more privileged than others right. so i do feel like at some point there should be an even playing field there but you know mm -hmm. i can't tell you not to spend your money and yeah, you, know, if you want to spend it spend it yeah, yeah, yeah. Spend it. <laughs> i told her to act her own age bitch she died. Are you close with Rue? Like, what is your guys' relationship with Rue outside of the show? Or is everything pretty much filmed and he keeps his distance from you guys? It's a television show. And when I went into Drag Race, I didn't go in expecting to be best friends with RuPaul. Mm -hmm. I didn't go in there expecting to be Kiki and friends. And after this, we're going to have to... No. Because we were in quarantine and we were in a bubble, she she really was very open with us. And her walkthroughs with us would be really long. And, you know, she really, really, like, connected with the girls in my season. And I do feel like if I ever saw RuPaul out on the streets, like, she would stop and kiki with me. There was one thing she told me on the last episode that we filmed. It didn't air. But she told me she was like, you're a very special queen, and I would hire you in a heartbeat. It didn't air. Yes. But that, to me, was, like, this, this type of approval. Yes. Where I was like, I don't need to win a crown because I've got this type of approval from the person who has created an industry for me to literally live out my dream. You know, there are girls that go on the show and are bitter because maybe RuPaul isn't their best friend. And there's no need for all that because at the end of the day this is a 60 year old man right who has literally created an industry for us and now we get to like live out our dreams and and meet amazing fans and make all this money and just yeah. and be so privileged within the drag yeah. world and the gay community i don't need you know rupaul to be my best friend yes and once you're on rupaul's is like is that a guaranteed full-time career like are there any queens that go on rupaul's maybe don't have the fan base you have and find themselves at a regular job again <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that well, you know, it, it, okay. I'm fascinated by that because it's well, like, you know. Yeah, no, it, it, it's okay. Well, here's the thing it is the reality of Drag Race. Drag Race is a golden ticket that only 12 to 13 girls get a year, mm -hmm. as any other reality television show. When those shows come out, people have their fan favorites. And those fan favorites move on to have long-lasting careers. Luckily, most of us work in the club scene. So we will always have those clubs to fall back on. And you will always have the RuPaul's Drag Race name to fall back on at mm -hmm. those clubs. Mm -hmm. There are some girls that don't have the opportunities that maybe some of the popular girls get. The reality is, out of 12 to 13 girls, not everyone's gonna be a star. Is there a competition between the girls in your season? Like when you find out a girl booked this venue and you didn't book that venue, is oh, that type of energy? No, you know, I don't know about any other season, but in my season we are all very, very, very supportive. Everyone has, has their own track. Everyone has their own thing. Everyone has their own, you know, situation. And it really is what you make of it because I can give you the opportunity, mm -hmm. but if you drop the ball, then you drop the ball, and that is only on you. You can't blame me for that. Right. There's been so many seasons, and when your season comes out, you are like the hot commodity. So you're booking like crazy. Mm. And then the next season comes out. Do you feel like you notice you notice a drop in bookings once the next season comes out? You know, interestingly enough, I was talking about this with Denali because season 14 came out in January. January is more of the slower months for Rue Girls. That's when all the girls get their work done. Yay. That's all the hair, you know. So what'd you get done? Oh, don't worry about that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But, you know, it's a, it's a slower month. So, because it's right after the holidays, I took two weeks off in December for the, um, the Christmas holidays, and then January is a slower month. So, it was a good month and a half of, like, not no work. I had work here and there, mm -hmm. but it wasn't consistent as I had throughout the entire rest of the year. So, it's not that the bookings stop coming in, because, maybe I'm so booked busy, yes, nonetheless. Yes, you are. But... There are time periods where you feel like, oh my God, like what am I not doing? Do I need to put out more content? You know, what, are people going to forget about me? Um, you can tell the, fo the the increase in followers, it kind of slows down. It's, it slows down a little bit. And if you're popular, you have nothing to worry about. If you're a fan favorite, you work. And just because there are 18 seasons of Drag Race doesn't mean that I'm going to stop working. Right. So. You were cast in the season prior, right? 
All right, so let's put this rumor to rest because everyone, I did, I saw this a line. Everyone thinks I got casted for season twelve, and then I saw that. Yeah, what was it? Was it that I declined it, or I, I couldn't find what, what the reason was? Okay, so the, I got. They said I got casted for season twelve, and then I said no, which is why they got Jada. That's a lie. Dahlia Sin, my sister, got casted for season twelve. I put in the most random audition tape the very okay. last day, so no, I was not casted on twelve. Um, although it would have been nice to be casted on 12 and come back for 13, but no, no, no. What is, like, the best gig for a RuPaul's girl to book? Like, does everyone want that Vegas review? The Las Vegas Live is an amazing gig to book. The production value is up to the T. So, like, everything with Brandon Voss, baby, count me in. But, you know, everyone has their own separate gigs that they want to book. Everyone has... You know, I am happy with booking the TV gigs. You can cast yes, me. You can cast I me at iCarly. I saw that. Yeah. Yes. Nothing I want to ask you about is the House, House of Aja. Yes. So you were part of the House of Aja. Correct. And now you're not. Correct. Well, the House of Aja isn't a thing anymore. Well, I mean, technically it will always be a thing because we were a moment in time. Yeah. You know, we were one of the first drag houses that only one of us had been on Drag Race and we were also traveling. We were the most popular drag house in the country without all of us being on Drag Race. And we were setting trends. We were wearing pastel hair. Suddenly everyone's wearing Love. pastel hair in the drag community. It was a moment in time. But then what happened? You know, we as we grow older, I do feel like people change and people go on their own paths and then it's a regular thing for friends to fall out. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think people are always going to find the tea and find the, ooh, what, like, you know, we're friends. We're really good friends. Me and Aja are roommates. And we just fall off. And that happens, and that's healthy. It means you're growing and evolving. And yeah. And, you know, on, on the very first episode of season 13, I threw some shade to Aja. And people took that and ran with that as if me and Aja hate each other. And we don't. You know, we I see Aja all the time. How is it dating as a famous drag queen? Because <laughs> I'm sure a lot of guys are hitting you up. Uh-huh. But they're true. hitting you up for can. Are they? You're worried they're hitting you up for candy and not for. Well, you know, it, the line is so blurred now that I can't go to a gay bar and just be like hide because mm -hmm. everyone, everyone there knows who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna fault anyone for asking me questions about Drag Race. People are curious, and if I was seeing so, if I wasn't on Drag Race and I saw a bitch in Drag Race that I'm like kind of into, but like also like. How was your experience? I'm gonna ask questions too. It's almost weird so, if they don't ask you questions and it's like you know they want to know. That's the thing. Well, you don't ask questions. I'm like, okay, you're trying to see and pretend that like you don't know who right, I am. So right. like now I'm, you right. know, it's weird. Yeah. Um. So this facade, you know, take yeah. it down. Are you on dating apps? Am I on dating apps? No. Are you single? <laughs> I am single. Bye. Okay. <laughs> no, I am single. I am single. Um. It's just it's it's weird. You know, I it's once I make a connection with someone, it's it. I don't know. It it, it becomes really. Because then they get really obsessed with the lifestyle and the clubbing and the VIP and 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 the, and the famous drag queens and you know it 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 really becomes like a drug for the person who I'm dating because they've never experienced this and this new lifestyle is new to them and now they're like oh my god like you know I love this I love this. And then it becomes more about that and less about the relationship. With Drag Race in particular, it's like every single gay guy watches Drag Race. It's not like you're just on a TV show. Where exactly. It's like some people watch it, some people don't watch it. It's like if you are gay, you know who you are. Yeah. So it's such an interesting like fit. It's like every single guy you're gonna date is gonna know who you are. Very that. Very very that. <laughs> what is your experience with? The fans of RuPaul's, because I remember you tweeted something and you were like, listen up, like, if you're planning on going on RuPaul's, like, make sure you're okay mentally for it because it's tough and, like... When I tweeted that, I'm pretty sure that was the weekend uh, of me and Tamisha. I don't give a fuck <laughs> what any of the bottom girls have to say about me. No Suck it, bitch. Like now everyone loves it, but then it was, it was rough, bitch. It was, I was being attacked nonstop. You do have to be a very strong person to go out to Drag Race. It's a very difficult position. Drag Race is one of the number one shows that's watched all over the world now yeah. so you have the opinions of every single person mm -hmm. coming from every single direction that's what's hard about reality because it's not like you're playing a character it's like you're playing yourself so when people are hating on you it yeah. feels like a yeah, personal yeah, yeah, attack yeah. yeah yeah at the end of the season when me and someone did the final lip sync i didn't really want to win that lip sync because the hate from the fans would have been uh a little too much for me to handle um wow so yeah but it, it happens and i knew going into this tv show and this franchise i'm a very polarizing character and i knew that people were gonna have their opinions about me and also i've been through enough in my life where i can tell you that a tweet from a 12 year old little girl is not really gonna fucking bother me yeah it's like it's, your skin has become thickened because of this. baby yeah mm -hmm. what is like next for candy music what is your dream 
in five years from now, where do you see yourself? Oh, God, five years from now? I can't even know. You know, I don't even know what I'm going to be doing tonight. I think I've made an impact in a very well-known name for myself mm -hmm. uh, just in the very short year that I've been around. Granted, Candy Muse was a known name before Drag Race. Just let it be known. I was the first girl on Cosmopolitan that had not been on Drag Race. I opened that door for other girls. I've always been a hustler. I've always been a hard worker. And no isn't going to stop me. You're always going to hear five no's before you hear a yes. Mm -hmm. But just because one door closes, does not mean you can't build your own fucking door. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Thank you so much. I'm I'm so thankful to you. I know that like squeezing me in is means a lot. And no, you know, I've given you uh, the runaround for the past... Learn knows how many weeks so <laughs> no it worked out and it was all worth it it's all meant to be so i really appreciate it thank, thank you very you. much i can't wait to put this out i really appreciate you taking the time thank you thank you thank you mm. all right sweet awesome thank you